Ariel Hawani in Abu Dhabi for UFC 112 with the legend himself, Henzo Gracie, who of course makes his UFC debut this Saturday night live on pay-per-view against Matt Hughes. And Henzo, obviously a lot to talk to you about, but first, how does it feel, 43 years young, to finally make your Octagon debut? It's like I, I was waiting for this day, you know. I, was, I knew this was going to happen. If I didn't die, I would be here, you know. So here I am, and in I, good shape, good health, and ready to go. And in Abu Dhabi, the first ever outdoor UFC event, a lot of people are saying that you're the man who is instrumental in putting this whole thing together. It must be pretty special because you've come here a lot. You've been here for the last few years training with the Sheik. Yes, yeah, I've been coming here for the past 14 years. Just last year alone, I was here 11 times. And uh, it's an unbelievable country, unbelievable people, unbelievable food. It's... You know, a very magical place, and to have the opportunity to be part of this. You know, even though a lot of people say that I have a lot to do with this, I think uh, with the entrepreneurs like Dana White and the Fertitas, it, everything becomes easy. You know, they have a great product. I do believe this is the best product out there, best sport, most entertainment, most the one that calls you, call, call, calls the attention of people most, and it's easy to sell. You know, it's like selling jiu-jitsu. It's the most easy, it's the easier thing to sell in life is jiu-jitsu and UFC. <laughs> oh, very well said. You know, there are a lot of misconceptions about Abu Dhabi. You've been here a lot. You spent a lot of time here. Tell the people at home what is this country like because it's sort of this mysterious place in the Middle East. Americans should be coming here more. You know, for you to have an idea, every time I'm here. They do think I'm an American because of my accent. They don't realize that I'm a Brazilian trying to speak English, you know. It's because they're not used to Americans come down here. Most like Europeans, uh, people from England, and Americans should, Australia, people from America should have come down here. It's one of the best paradise I have ever seen. The prices here are very moderate, like it's, you can have the dream vacation in paradise. Crime here doesn't exist, you know. It's a very magical place where Americans should have make their final destination for vacations too. This is a special event, first outdoor UFC event. Uh, you fought outdoors before. Is that different in terms of preparation and, and, and on fight night? Anything different you have to deal with? You see, there's no difference in terms of training or nothing like that. And uh, once the fight starts, nothing bothers you, not even the groin cup that you use. <laughs> you forget about it, you're going to think about when the fight is over. The moment that the bell rings, there's only one thing in the world. is your opponent across the ring. Everything else you, is just an imagination. It's like a dream. You know, They just fade away. All right, the uh, last time we saw you in action, February 2007. The fight kind of ended in a weird fashion, you and Frank Shamrock. Did you ever think you would fight again, or at that time, did you maybe think that that would be the end of your career? No, I, I knew I was going to fight again. You know, it's, uh, There's no way that a career like mine, I'm going to end up with a, bad, uh, with a bad closing. You know, I will have a lot of good moments. Even if, I, if it happens of me losing, I'm going to show how a Gracie lose. You know? yes. So that's the big difference. I'm here to fight. And I know that the moment that I walk out of that ring, I'll be a much better man, a much better fighter, a much better instructor. You know, I'm going to be able to teach the future generations everything that I learned inside that ring on Saturday night. And let's be clear, this is not one and done for you. You're, you're planning on sticking around for a while here in the UFC, right? My friend, take a look at this. Look at that. You see, I didn't get like this to do one job. Can I touch? Can I rub? Of course. Wow, that is... It's going to bring you luck. You can play it's a, like the Buddha. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's not one and done. No, it's not. I was able to get rid of 35 pounds on the past uh, five months. You know, just training. I didn't have to diet much. I'm right now uh, 174 pounds. So I'm four pounds above weight from Saturday. I have two days to lose those four pounds. I may be able to even weigh in with, on my, with my clothes on, you know. But I'm for sure I'm not. I'm training for the long run. Even though I had a short window to train, I trained just for six months. And I'm looking actually to reach my peak next year on 2011. So I'm pushing this forward to fight a lot this year and next year. So if I do a good show, you guys are going to be seeing me soon for sure. Well, we look forward to that. All right. So, But is it possible that this could be one in uh, 170 pounds and then you're going down to 155 because you've had such an easy time cutting the weight? Definitely. I can reach 155 at any time. The good thing, I'm like a wild card. I can play from 155 to Brock Lesnar. Oh, really? You know, yes, I'm going to go in there to pound on his head. That he should be drinking Bud Light instead of Coors Light. You know, so anything is possible. But then if Frankie wins the title, right, which I'm sure you're expecting on Saturday, then you're not going to challenge him for the title if you go down to 155. Definitely not. Definitely not. I'm just joking. He's a yeah. giant. Like, you know, one of his legs is my weight. You know, he's a, he's a gentle giant, very special guy. And 
we need him in the sport. The reality is we need guys like him to promote and push the sport forward. You know, it's a, it's a great champ. And any one of those two guys, I'll be sitting down there and watching to admire them. All right, let's quickly talk about your fight. Uh, Matt Hughes, obviously a legend in the sport. Is this one personal for you because he beat your cousin Hoyce at UFC 60? Every time it's personal. It's personal to me because uh, anybody who, who I'm fighting with, is, we're going to get personal. You can't get closer than that, you know. But in the end, we're going to sit down, have an acai juice and laugh and tell the stories about how good we were in the future, you know. As we grow old, better we were and, you know, we're going to crack jokes with each other and tell the stories to our grandson. So that's what, is, that, that's what this sport is all about. So there's no beef because there are a lot of guys who have beefs with, uh, with Matt Hughes, your friend Matt Serra. He doesn't like him very much, but it seems as though there's a mutual respect there between the both of you. I do. I do like him a lot. I, I saw him as a young kid starting on this profession and... I saw him from a, a very good wrestler to become an unbelievable MMA fighter, you know. So I, I have n nothing for him but admiration, you know. What's the key to defeating him? I do believe it's my guillotine. So if I was him, I would keep his eyes open for my guillotine. Very strong guillotine. It's going to be all about the jiu-jitsu. Definitely, yes, yes. I'm going to be looking forward to show my, my skills or my, my, my martial art. Okay, and final question. Do you believe this is the same Matt Hughes? He hasn't fought in, in, in almost close to a year. Um, some say that Matt Serra deserved to beat him at UFC 98. Do you think you will see the same Matt Hughes, the dominant Matt Hughes, who was uh, such a dominant champion for so many years? I do hope to fight uh, him at his best. You know, I'm not... Uh, you have to understand that a sprinter never runs against his opponents. He runs against the clock. He runs against himself. He always tries to improve himself. That's the same thing in our sport. Even though he is the the wall that I have to go through, you know, I have to concentrate in, in my performance, in what I'm going to do it to overcome the barrier, you know. For sure, I want him to be on his best. I want him to give me the most trouble I could ever find. So then I can, I can learn and improve myself. All right, Hanzo, well, it is an honor to speak to you here That's in Abu Dhabi. And uh, nice best, of luck. Here, best of luck to you Saturday. All the best to you guys.